Gonna be showing a solo master nightfall, getting the platinum rank and the 100k pinnacle score. This is gonna be the last nightfall of the season, so I'm pretty certain people aren't trying to do nightfalls to level up. I might be doing it for ascendant shards and stuff like that. Last week was double loot, this week isn't. Um, it takes this crash, not many people like it. I don't like it so much. I like the particular run itself, boss fight the way it's designed. But on this run, um, you're gonna find that um, heavy ammo is widely available. Your primary weapons do most of the work. So this setup is okay, it's decent. Are there better setups? Yes, there is. But it's the end of the season, like I said, and just keeping things interesting for me. Um, well, things are, well, we wait for the new season. We're using an Arc Soul turret build. Um, the knife ball modifiers, the main things are hot knife, so the solar shanks, a lot of them, so we've got a solar weapon for that. Attrition's on, so there's no health regen. Naturally, you get health regen from um, orbs that you pick up off enemies. Uh, the usual business, champions, overload, and anti barrier for Exodus. Income and arc and environmental damage is increased. So, with this first part, you just need to pick up all the beams. Um, not all the ads need to be taken out. You can, I would probably say, take out the first set of ads like I did, and then on the second sort of instance that I just passed there, you can just jump across that uh, roof, like that rooftop, like I did, uh, and generally you won't get sniped. And even if you do, you should survive it with the incoming arc damage, uh, having the arc damage resistance on your test plate. I add on. This part we're just going to scout things from a distance. I'll talk briefly about bits and bobs about my build as I'm doing it. So, um, other things that we had on were Spores of War, Surge here. So these two modifiers mean that every time we finish a kill a champion we get a heavy ammo brick. Nine times out of ten. Surge here means every time we stun an overload champion we get our grenade back. Um, which plays into the whole thing of having your nade up a lot. I'm not using Arc Soul build right now because everything's long distance and the Arc Souls have a range drop off. We're also using the exotic pulse rifle No Time to Explain which spawns a... It's something similar to a Arc Soul but it's not quite the same. It acts a little different and it doesn't appear to have range drop off like the Arc Soul does. Um, but you combine those two together, we've got Bottom Tree, Stormcaller, because Bottom Tree, Stormcaller is the Arc Soul version of the Stormcaller. Top Tree, bottom, uh, top tree, Middle Tree, you don't need to use those with this build. You can do, but you may as well just have a Rift that creates an Arc Soul as well as your um, Exotic Gauntlets, which is the Gateway Artist, that's what they're called. So with this part, um, once we collect all the um, Pulse Waves, we're going to play at this hill a little bit. I could have popped a healing rift at any point, but I was relying on attrition, which you do get common drops. We're going to take down the solar shanks here, as many as we can. Taking out any marauders. There's adds way behind us, but they won't hit you from acid on it. Take all the adds uh, that I'm taking um, is all that's required. You don't really need to do any more than I did. You can certainly do less than what I did because got well over the one to kill. Um, but you don't want to be skipping too much. Yeah. Obviously you're getting all the champions. That's a no-brainer, so you want platinum for it. This is no point doing the run, because as I said, no one's leveling up now, it's the end of the season. But people are farming stuff. And it, it, it's 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 not a hard night for this, and I imagine most people are close to twelve eighty, if not way above. And this run works, as I said, even if you're deprived of heavy, it works, which I'll get into why it works, no matter what. I could have done the whole thing, double primary only. The only thing there is that the video would have took longer. That's what you need to understand is, I'm making a video on it, I don't want the video way too long. Because um, viewers don't want to sit through 55 an hour long videos. There's, there's already long enough videos with Grandmasters. We don't want to be too long but I'm just saying this build is capable of killing the boss all champions with no heavy required especially with the way we're doing it which I'll talk about when we get to the boss fight this section can be tricky because a lot of arc bullets that 
It's way around that corner. Um, so that's where you're doing a healing rift and stuff there. And then let no time to explain and all the arcs will deal with the rest. Then we'll get a stone the champion. Uh, and then we'll use our sword. Now, there's multiple ways you can do a heavy attack, then light swings, or light swings, then heavy attack. I've got relentless strikes uh, and well wind blade. But the, the, the most important thing is try and get a plenty amount of finisher kills. I've got sword ammo finder on my uh, helmet, which does help. But um, I would just finish a couple of champs. Therefore, you've got a couple of bricks on the floor. You've got sword scavenger on, so we're getting a lot of sword ammo in one brick. It just, it just means that we're definitely not going to run out of ammo. No matter what. We use the super there to clear out all the vandals because the vandals can get in the way of you trying to kill champions. Now, I'm going to show you two ways of killing the champions. One way with swording the champ, then using spores of war. Another way of using no heavy, as I said, then procking your arc uh, soul. And then just spamming your scout rifle. This scout rifle is a blue scout rifle. Now I'm not using it to uh, mess about or joke because it's not a very good weapon. It's a fantastic weapon. I'm using it though as it's more available than the raid scout. There's only two solar scouts available at power, at this power level, at 1260. Well, it's 1250 this scout, but you know, within the realm of this season, there's only two solar scouts this and raid scout. And if people don't have the raid scout, then they can use this. The raid scout would have done a very good job as well. It's actually very good in PvE. But so is this weapon. What lets this weapon down the blue scout is that it's 1250 in power. And it's noticeable sometimes if your time is not correct on overloads, you will lose your flow of infinite overload. Which basically means you can just keep staggering staggering champ weed scout rifle because it's got explosive payload it doesn't need to have explosive payload but the explosive payload gives additional stagger and just means that you can keep that champ stun lock this raid solar scout can do this as well uh, and it's a very interesting archetype so if you've got the solar raid scout put it on use it because it's 1260 if this blue sky scout rifle was 1260 if you could infuse it uh, it would be just that little bit better but well, having said that, it's not too bad. Plus, we've got Surge Eater on, so every time we stun the champ, we can either throw an aid at the champ, or we can do an Axel. I think I do both. Sometimes I'll throw an aid, sometimes I'll do the Axel. For the purpose of the video, I want to do more Axels to show you the sort of damage and sort of provide an additional stagger with my scout. So, it's kind of good. It's very good. This particular Nightfall, the modifiers aren't the best because of arc damage increased and attrition. Um, so, that just shows to, goes to show that this build isn't too bad. It's not maybe a meta, but it's not too bad because it can cope in what was, like, you know, one of the highest difficulties in the game, apart from Grandmaster. And the arc souls are doing decent damage. Now, I think that might be because of the modifier, but they do, they do decent damage anyways. Now in terms of what can stack and what can't, so we have uh, three ways of getting a turret or an axle. We have no time to explain, we have our grenade that we convert into an axle by holding our grenade button with the gateway artist. And we have a healing rift. The healing rift version and the grenade version are the same axle. If you do a, if you hold your grenade, then do a healing rift, you're just going to still have one axle. It doesn't stack. But what does stack is no time to explain turret, because it's a different, t it's not axle, it's something else. Right? That stacks with axle, so you can have two turrets. Plus you'd be firing with your pulls. So, it does a lot of combined damage, as you saw there, I took out the anti-barrier. Not too bad. Um, was it a melt? No, it wasn't. I would say that Outbreak Perfected is probably, if I was doing a proper serious run, I was wanting to use an exotic primary, then Outbreak Perfected would be better than this weapon. It just does more damage. Having said that, this weapon's okay. It's alright for what it does. Uh, and with the way we're going to do the boss fight, it's kind of perfect weapon for it. When the first anti is killed, 
don't stay to take the right side or the left side, whatever anti-barrier you took, it doesn't matter whether you go left or right, but just know on this spawn, this is the most important spawn, that there's three, and, uh, three overloads to kill. Now with attrition being on, your best bet is, rather than trying to sustain fire behind this corner, which is a good location, but your healing rift isn't going to last forever. And you can't sometimes always get one overload killed out of the three because one overload might teleport in front of the other one and they might it just might be a mess of time. Your best way is to stun on a champ at full health, make sure you're full health, go around there, get the sword kill on him, you're more than likely gonna get a well. Even if you don't, you're full health and you'll be able to tank half health damage, at least. Obviously if you're below 1270, the strats that I'm doing, in terms of where I'm sorting the champ there, you're not gonna be able to do that. But as I said, this isn't even really a guide, this is just me providing additional commentary in terms of what I'm doing. Because people really like that. That's that's the only thing of it. Here's me, as I said, kill, killing the champs with outsword. Like so. So, once the overloads, the three overloads are killed, the next phase is obviously to take the second anti-barrier. For whatever reason, they spawn after the first anti-barrier is killed. I don't know why, but that's their spawn. Anti barrier is not very threatening because they don't they only do void. So fine. Obviously when you're getting crits as well the gun will reload itself. So the more accurate you are, the less reload you don't. So that's the beauty of it. But as I said, outbreak perfected does way more damage than what it would in terms of anti barriers. It would melt them way quicker, but just gels with what I'm using in terms of the build. Now we'll collect a bit more percentage. Obviously the ads are linked to the percentage of the plates. So sometimes I'm probably standing on the plate where I'm getting one or two spawns rather than one. If you're not confident with the spawns, literally step on the plate. As soon as you see one ad, like a two or three ads, step off the plate. And then that way, kill all the ads off the plate back here where you are, where we are on the stairs. Clear all of them, clear the champ and then step back on the plate. The only time you should have to deal with more than one champion is after that first anti-barrier. Well, sorry, overlords. Talking strictly the overlords. The only time will be after that first anti-barrier. And obviously two anti-barriers are easy. Um, but if you stand on the plate, you might get two spawns and you might get two, two overlords together. If so, then just do um, what we're doing initially. Stand lower down the stairs. Try to um, get one overload on his own or stagger the overload at full health, go in for the sword kill and then retreat. But if that's causing an issue, just do one ad phase at a time, step on and off. On the ladder, fa ladder phases, there's going to be heavy solar shanks. Uh, they're solar shielded anyways, but we've got the scout on for that. There'll be two phases after this, so there'll be a phase here uh, with the heavy solar shank and then there'll be another phase where there's a champion with two solar shanks and then a bunch of uh, vandals like that. The vandals and fallen and stuff like that can be difficult on grandmaster difficulty or master difficulty when arc damage incoming is increased because the arc bullet sways, they're probably one of the hardest enemy types in the game when um, their AI is at the best. Apart from maybe Scorn. We know Scorn are annoying. Taken a good, but they are meant to be difficult, challenging. I think everyone likes Taken, I do myself. We're falling at times. I mean, Hive, they're fine. At, like, Master and GM difficulty, to be fair. Um, Kabala, Vexar. Just falling, falling for me. I'm not a massive fan of when the grandmaster or you know any, the higher the difficulty goes just because of their arc bullets they just go around corners this is the next phase we're gonna have a super to use so we may as well match games on though so we need to take one of the shields down ideally I could have took both solar shields down time would have been a bit off because the solar shanks are separated. So we'll take one, 
And the rest of our super, because this super doesn't last that long, we'll just use it on the mini ads because they're the ones that get in the way of the champs, etc. Still got a heal in there, so we get back in that and then retreat to our usual location. And then we can take out the exploded shanks. They're not dangerous as long as you don't take them out when you're standing too close. Just take them from there. We have got a charge with like type of build on. It's not so much a build. It's just I've stuck on loose and blade with uh, shield break charge and high uh, taken charge as well. So when we are using our sword, we're getting benefit from it. But other than that, I didn't need to put it on. I could have done it without. Um, but I've got slots there to put. So I may as well put something that's relevant to what we're doing. Um, in terms of stats, that's the most important thing with this, because because we're using a certain specific style of play, the stats are more important than you know maybe a war mind cell or this that and the other, because you you're playing for the getaway artist and the no time to explain. So you want high discipline and you want high recovery. You want high recovery because your healing rifts are linked to your recovery. You're gonna have a quicker healing rift, meaning that whenever you proc your healing rift, you get an axle. So that's increasing. How many arc souls you getting? Then the higher discipline just makes sense. We get we artist, meaning that when you proc it, as long as you get plenty of kills with the arc soul, time it's run out, you've got it back to use it again. And the more adds, the better it is. So it's very good, it, and it's only only gets better when there's more adds around. And obviously you want the 100% discipline. Then it's infinite arc souls at that point. When it runs out, you more likely have it back. There's other perks that I could have used, it's like things like Bolter and Detonation, Bomber, where you pop your Rift, you get green energy, all that stuff. I could have done, but all the seasonal mods and stuff are more important than that. I.e. Spores of War, having them heavy is more important than just getting a little bit of grenade energy back, etc. So, it's annoying in, a, in, in one sense, because you can't build out your character fully for all this other stuff, like anti-barrier rounds, Overload, Scout, we can't put loaders on Gauntlets anymore. It's good that they're on there, because you can use exotics. Uh, like right now, obviously I've got Anti-Barrier and I'm using exotic, which... That wasn't a thing until recently. So I like it for that, but I don't like not being able to run loaders. I should be able to run weapon loaders. So I either put weapon loaders in the gun or something, rather than it being a Gauntlet based thing, because now we're putting all our Anti-Barrier Unstoppable in our gauntlet so there's never any room for loaders either do that or, or just make a change because technically the older system was a bit better because you could run a loader perk and then the anti-barrier rounds was in the weapon so what they should have done is just added anti-barrier rounds got a bull shot a mod slot sort of to like an additional slot to legendaries i don't know what they would have done with exotics because obviously you can have anti-barrier SMG, you can have anti-barrier sidearms, so you can't... They're not going to allow all anti-barrier rounds for every exotic that season, because it's just going against what they want. What they want is the anti-barrier stuff and all that to be seasonal, to be... Right, this season it's Scout that we're uh, obsessed with, or, or bow. So it will go against it, but as I said, it's just annoying with the way that sort of turned out. This section's um, <clears throat> simple enough. We just need to take the tank. Problem is with the sniper, uh, was hitting us. I found a good angle right here, just on the fly. You can just crouch there and then just take the tank from a distance. We can even saw the tank, but just be careful because if there was heavy shanks, there isn't. There isn't seem to be heavy shanks there, but generally there is one or two. They can melt you quite quick, so if you're going to go in there and saw the tank, just make sure it's killable or you have a super as well to back up. You don't want to wipe. I mean, if you do wipe, you won't... It'll just be a timer and you'll be able to res up. Yeah. So it's no big deal. It's another thing we'd stun on the tank back here, kind of get... Um, crits, but we use our super because you don't need your super. At this point, you don't need any more heavy. Well, you we could do with 10 or 20 for the champion that we're going to take 
inside, but other than that you don't need any heavy. So if you were, if you didn't have as much heavy or stuff like that as me, it wouldn't matter. If you had zero heavy, it wouldn't matter. Um, so use your super, use your heavy, because you're not going to need any of that. Tank's down, so we're going to the last room before the farm boss. There's going to be one overload champion in here, and that's the only thing you need to kill. Well, that's the only thing required for platinum. The only things else I would uh, take out is shoot this explosive as soon as you open the door. That just takes out everything because explosive damage is increased. So explosive damage doesn't only affect um, against you, it works for you. I'm guessing that's what's doing with the arc, and that's why arc souls doing better than usual because of that modifier. We'll get a stun here. I done a healing me first because I didn't know what the champion would do. We're happy to use a healing me. We're happy to use as much heavy as possible. Just take out that champion. Don't need to get a finisher kill on him. Don't need to optimize his room. Come to this location here to skip it. It isn't dangerous to do. Um, as There'll be a sniper or two that spawns, but as you're running up, the sniper will always jump to the left. By the time you jump to the left, you've passed. So just skip it. There's there's no gain from doing that room. The only thing I would say is have plenty of primary ammo. If you're low on primary, pick up any white bricks that you had down below off the champion or any of the smaller ads that we killed. Just make sure you're highish on primary. It's just going to help out. It doesn't matter so much because the game will give you ammo. But it's just to optimize it. Just have plenty of primary. So this is how we do the roof exploit, which I'm showing in the video. Which um, it isn't difficult to do. We're sort of trying to jump up here. If you are on Well of Radiance, you can do the hold your nade and then jump up, and it makes you jump up further. If you're doing a well type run. Or if you're doing Contraverse Hold, which will be really good for this strap because you basically have an infinite nades from up top. Um, it be very good. But if you're not doing it with that, and you're doing it the way I'm doing it, then the sword will come in handy. I'm trying to get up this ring just a little higher. It's very important that we do this. We can't stay here because if we stay there and start the boss fight, you'll get joint allies. And then you'll be spawned on the floor. So we jump up to this top floor. You must be at the top. If you don't, you'll get joint allies. We left the Exploder Shank up because that then um, starts the fight while we're up at the top. You also need to actually set foot in the arena, kill a couple of Exploder Shanks, and then do this jump. Did you hear if that? you don't jump down and you kill, kill all the Exploder Shanks, it won't initiate the fight, and you have just ruined the exploit, and you can't do it. Then you'll have to do the fight. With this loadout, not very good. Attrition on, not very good. Um, if, attrition, if attrition wasn't on, it wouldn't be so bad, but... No, attrition's on and stuff. So, from up top, as you can see, um, you can basically just prime the boss down. Really good, works well, as we're proccing time chasm, we're proccing the gun, we're getting the rewind again, we're getting bullets back. So it's super easy just to do damage, and the boss won't move. Because the boss isn't threatened by you. If I was to start, if I say I had a heavy grey launcher on, I had Xenophage, started doing heavy damage to the boss, the boss would be moving left, right, moving all around the map because the boss is triggered by that heavy damage. The boss will then move. This is what happens with bosses that are very mobile. But if you're just primary in a boss, they're just going to sit there. It's kind of like V1 when you used to sort of do stuff like this. Um, so the boss is just sitting there because we're not doing that much damage, but we're doing consistent damage, and he's just sitting there. It's just an easy target, and this boss is kind of annoying because he's invis and he's hard to track at times. If you don't know where he goes, then you might find it annoying up here because there's not much you can do. If you don't know where he is, you're gonna have to sort of use your guns to um, trigger the ads out. Obviously, be mindful of your health. Heal and rift when you think it's an emergency and stuff like that. But at that point, when the boss despawns, um, 
you must clear all ads for the next phase of the fight to start. At least Greg here had a good nade on me, he kept, kept nade below so I was getting weak off that so it was the emergency to do a healing. The Explorer Shanks are not part of any trigger. If you kill all ads, all the Explorer Shanks will despawn and then the next part will um, start. There's no need to take out Explorer Shanks until maybe the very end. But if you're looking around the map, you can't see any ads, then just look directly below you and the ads will probably be there. Now, another thing is to look behind pillars. There's a pillar in the middle, pillar top, middle, and then right. Those blue pillars, wretches and vandals, hide behind them. Okay? So any pillars, especially with this scout, really good, the explosive payload, it'll um, fetch any adds out, it'll force them out of cover, which you'll see me do at times. But when it, the explosive shanks despawn, next phase of uh, adds spawn in, and then we get champions. There'll be three anti barry champions, one at first and then another two on the next spawn. For now, we're just going to take out any vandals and wait. We're waiting for the anti-barrier to be in a good location. The boss can hit you here and there up here, so you're not completely safe. But I would definitely heal them if for the anti-barrier, because you've got to do a lot of sustained fire. Our sword, obviously we've got a sword on, so the sword's no good here. I know that. But the sword's so good in the initial phases that it's worth having on, and when you get to this part, then you can... And it kind of showcase the pulse. Doing good. I'm gonna keep track on the anti barrier. It's hard to get crits at times when the servitors look down, which can happen. Kind of weak here, so I'm ducking between shots, and I haven't got a healing. So don't risk. Like if if I had to. Let that anti-barrier regen. If that would avoid me dying, then do so. Because you've got primary ammo. The beauty of this loadout is you don't need to be pressured to sort of do massive damage because you're just pulsing the anti-barriers down. That's all you're doing. One problem that you're going to come into is running out of ammo. Make sure you've got a good few bullets for the anti-barriers. Um, try to use your scout for the ads and then pulse for the boss because the pulse will give you ammo there like from thin air that's thin, that's that's from thin air as long as you get crits obviously you won't always uh, and it will suffer from range drop off this weapon whereas outbreak I think outbreak would do a lot a little bit better here because yeah it won't rewire, it won't reload itself like this gun does but it will do way more damage with the nanites the only reason why, the only reason why I am not doing the outbreak run is because I've already done an outbreak run this first season. So it's just an excuse for me to use this weapon, as I haven't done a video with this weapon yet at all. So that's the only reason. Uh, if otherwise, if I hadn't done an outbreak video, I'll be using that over there. As I say, it does the job. It's it's not bad. It's definitely not a bad weapon. Got the next two anti barriers. Having pulse nades for them really helps out. It speeds up the damage. It means that you don't have to do as much sustained damage and that you're not going to get weak because, as I said, you want high recovery, yeah, sure, but that doesn't mean you've got infinite healing risks. We haven't got that build on. The, that build would be the stag, it would be other types of builds, but we're not wanting to do that. As I said, we want to do the arc build. We're lowish on ammo, so we're just going to start <clears throat> using that just to sort of initiate with the boss, get him to his final phase. Because at one point, I know I'm going to have to do um, an ammo, an ammo thing. So basically, when you run out of ammo entirely, so when you run out of primary, special, and heavy, I know I haven't got a special. One, when you run out of all weapon types. The game will give you ammo for free out of thin air. 
Now, if, if there's ammo on the floor, it'll suck the ammo up from the floor and put it into your weapon. Say, for example, I was using anarchy and I ran out of anarchy and primary and stuff, and there was a bunch of heavy. I would get the full heavy. But when there's absolute no ammo on the floor, no primary, it gives you a base amount of heavy. Uh, and with primary ammo, I'm not sure if it's full ammo or if it's half. That mechanic, I'm not 100% with. When there's ammo not on the floor, and I'm not sure anyone really knows. It, it, it's sort of random for that. But all you need to know is, you don't really need to know the fine details, just that you're going to get ammo back. When you waste your ammo, you'll get ammo back. So we used our sword earlier just to guarantee we get full ammo. So we did. We actually didn't get full primary actually because my scout can hold 160. But as I said, it's, it's more like a, uh, a random number and there might have been a primary uh, brick on the floor. There's no way of 100% no, but all you need to know, as I said, wipe your ammo up top to then get more ammo back. That's it. So the two champions are dealt with. We're just looking for ads at this point. Try not to jump about on this um, location. I've done this on the Grandmaster solo. This is the same strat as I've done on the Grandmaster, but try not to be jumping you can jump up and down like that but don't be jumping left and right once you jump too far right obviously too far left means don't fall off the ledge but the right side has like a ramp and it looks like you can stand on it but you can't so just be careful of where you're standing the thing is when there's when you're down to like one ad left um one ad will hide it has a slid off that that has a bit of a slidey part. We use the sword to get back on, which was handy because before we waste all our swords. So actually, kind of handy having some sword there, um, just to saw back on. But it was a risky move, and I shouldn't have really done that. But we got the add nonetheless. We're on the final phase of the fight, uh, and the boss will. I find that the boss will hide at the very top of the map. And it happened to me on my Grandmaster. It's happened to people who have watched runs of when they've done their Grandmaster solos. On this particular phase, on the final phase, the boss will hide up top and you'll see where he is. Now I knew that without even looking over there where he was. So my plan was, well I've got a super and I've got sword ammo so I may as well use it. What I'll do is, I'll get back all the territory on the, on the map by killing all the explorer shanks. Generally they're in the way, but when we jump down there'll be hardly any explorer shanks and we'll take the marauders because I do know marauders spawn on this final phase and the, half of them are orange bars and they hit really hard. Um, so if we take out most of the marauders and the shanks, then it should be just me and the boss virtually. So we can use super, we can use a healing reef, we can use a sword and just speed up the final phase. But if you wanna if you don't wanna do that and you're 40 minutes, 35 minutes into a run and you're like, oh well I'm not hundred percent the marauders are invis, I don't know why my ads are left, then you can just stay up here and just scout the boss down. It will take you a lot longer. You'll just need to keep an eye on the boss where he's gone. But I, I really think you're gonna obviously have a super His super cannot be used up, up at the top of here. So, it's worth your time. Just clear all the ads, because they're easier to find than the boss. Clear all the ads. Then you've got a super use on the boss. And you'll more than likely have some heavy. So you may as well just do that. It looks like there's literally nothing left. That's where the boss is. At the very top. I'm going to go down there. There's a Marooda still alive that I missed. Which is easy done. Very invis. We're full health, so we can go into the boss. Fine. Use some heavy. That then gets him weakish. There's a Maruda that's teleported on me. Fine. We'll do a healing then. And then the boss auto attacks you. It's in a different mode of attack on that final phase, the usual. That was the 100k platinum reward, the last 
knife fall of the season. Not interesting, but I tried to make it that way. Hope you enjoyed it, thank you. That's okay. I guess. No golden age ray guns? No. Well, that's okay, I guess. Well, come on back, Guardian. At least you got some loot.